Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So in my next YouTube um, shop student video, I need I want to cut the um, the back plate to my four jaw chuck. But I thought before I do that, um, I was just kind of curious. You know, no matter where you're going in life, you got to know where you're starting from, right? So I figured that philosophy probably comes down to this too. So uh, I thought I'd take a couple of uh, measurements of my spindle and kind of discuss what numbers we get and what I think they mean and and maybe you can give me some some feedback okay so the what I want to do is measure and see if I have any spindle in play in other words does the spindle move this way or not does it have any axial play does it move you know off its axes in any way Okay, and then um, the uh, spindle face right here where the chuck would seat up against, I want to know if there's any run out there. The boss um, that the uh, chuck rides on or sits on right here back behind the threads, I'd like to know if there's any uh, run out on that. Okay, and then the Morse taper to itself. Now, my Morse taper, it's clean. It doesn't feel the best in the world. Uh, it may have some nicks in there. I'm not really feeling any high spots or anything like that, but I'm curious to know, is there any run out in the uh, Morse 2 socket? I'm, I'm sorry, the Morse 3 socket in the uh, head here, uh, in the spindle. And then finally, uh, I don't have a Morse taper 3 dead center, but I do have a Morse 3 to Morse 2 socket, so I'd like to seat that in there and then run the inside of that and see if there, what kind of run out I get. And then finally, I do have a Morse taper to center. I'll get that seated in there and see what kind of run out we have on that. Now, admittedly for, you know, using a chuck, it doesn't matter uh, other than, you know, this run out uh, on this boss and the run out that's on the face of the seats. Now that would affect the chuck. The Morse Taper 2 uh, run out, any run out there, doesn't matter for turning anything in a chuck because you're not using it. Uh, it only matters if you uh, are turning between centers. But seeing that we're recently turned between centers uh, to align the headstock and tailstock, I'm kind of curious about these things. So let me get uh, the indicator set up and let's start. Okay, so I've set the indicator. This is a half thousandths indicator. Um, resting up against the flange where the uh, socket would sit right here. And it's preloaded, and I have it set fairly close to zero. So I can't really see and do this, so I might get my head in the way. But what I'm going to do is push and pull on the spindle itself to see if th there's any in play uh, deflection on the needle. So here I'm pushing and pulling, and it looks like there's a little bit. And I'm going to get my head here in the way. I'll probably edit it out, or maybe I won't. I don't know. Let me see how much is there. Okay, so what I'm seeing there is about, oh, a, a half of a half thousandths or about a quarter or, you know, two, twenty-five, ten thousandths, I guess you'd say. It's a half of a, you know, a, a, about two tenths maybe, I guess we'll say, two, three tenths, um, which is probably okay. Now, if you do have in play in your spindle, remember that... Uh, yeah, there's tapered roller bearings in the front and the back, and then there's a collar that screws down that that takes the in-play out. It puts the uh, puts the uh, bearings under compression, okay? And then, you know, once you have uh, the perceivable in-play out, you just preload those um, uh, by about a sixth of a turn is what I've done. I don't know a specific number, so if anybody knows how much you preload the um, tapered uh, uh, Temkin bearings in the headstock, let me know. Now remember, the, the, this machine's cold and things will heat up and expand, so as it heats up it may get more uh, or less uh, in play as it goes. So, But I think right now two tenths is probably fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the spindle and see uh, what, kind of, uh, uh, what kind of run out the face of this uh, this face here has that the uh, that the uh, chuck or the plate or I mean the you know the chuck back plate or your drive dog plate is going to seat up against 
which you know will be amplified further out here. So, all right, I'm gonna probably have to get my head in the way again here, but I'm gonna rotate this. So you see me spinning it. And I'm seeing a little bit of deflection on the needle. Let me get in here and see. Okay, I'm seeing about I'm seeing about five tenths there. So okay, so we know that uh, we got about two tenths of in play, got about five tenths of um, uh, out of a um, run out, I guess we should say here on this face. All right, so I'm going to get the uh, indicator set up. And we're going to check, check for any radial play in the spindle and see what the run out here is on this little uh, surface behind the threads that the uh, chuck um, and the faceplate and stuff sit on. So let me get set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have the indicator set up on this area of unthreaded area here at the back of the spindle that sets usually, you know, to like to register the chuck. Uh, back plate or the face plate or whatever you're screwing on here to register that up against this and against the uh, the back of the thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is check for axial ply. And what I'm doing is I'm twisting on the spindle and I might be getting one tenth. So the next thing I'm going to do is rotate the spindle and see if there's any run out. So we'll watch that. So from my angle, it looks like probably about four tenths. All right, so let me get those written down and I'll set up for um, checking the Morse Taper 3 socket. Okay, so in this position, I have the uh, indicator stuffed into the bore of the Morse Taper 3 and I'm probably almost a half inch in. I wanted to get past the, the edge and get as deep as I could. So I want to rotate the spindle and hopefully you can see the indicator there. See about how far we're out. <clears throat> so I'm seeing well, there's a little jerkiness of the needle probably from some scars on the inside, but I'm seeing about a thousandths total run out. So let me get that written down. And then I'm going to insert and seat the uh, Morse Taper 3 to Morse Taper 2 socket and see what we get. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I have the Morse Taper 3 to Morse Taper 2 socket in there. I cleaned out, uh, I cleaned out the headstock spindle real good and wiped, made sure that I wiped the, uh, uh, the MT3 to Morse Taper 2 socket good and clean and then seated it home with a, a light blow with a with a rubber puck. So anyway, um, so now I'm curious about what the uh, um, run out is here. It's an interesting thing here that we probably would want to observe. If it really mattered, you know, if the, if the, um, let's say the socket, the Morse Taper 3 to Morse Taper 2 socket, if it were not truly concentric, you know, it, it would have run out. Well, since the Morse Taper 3 socket has about a thousandths of run out, it could be possible to kind of mess around and mark both pieces and rotate them and take measurements and rotate and take measurements until the offsets nearly cancel each other out. So that that's an option. But uh, I'm not really worried about that. Let's let's take a uh, take this uh, for a spin and see what kind of uh, movement we have on the needle. All right, so. I'm bouncing between zero and looks like a thousand. So I would say that uh, the, the socket here has about one thousandth of an inch of run out. So now let me put the dead center or the live center in and get the indicator set up on that and we'll, we'll take a look at that. So give me just a second and we'll be right back. Well, I've cleaned the uh, inside of the Morse Taper 3 to Morse Taper 2 socket out real good and I've inserted uh, my Morse Taper 2 dead center. Okay, and uh, I guess technically on this end it's a live center, isn't it? Normally, I guess you would use a, a mild steel or a softer uh, center, but this is a, this is a carbide tip center, so it's really a dead center, and I just got it in the headstock. So let me rotate this around and see what kind of run out we got.
Okay, so again, I'm actually seeing less than a thousandths here. Uh, well, no, nah, you know, it's probably, you know, it's probably about a thousandth of an inch to maybe just a hair more, maybe, maybe a, a, a thousand and a tenth or two. Yeah, nah, it seems pretty consistent to be about a thousand. So, so, um, the run out on the center is a thousandth of an inch. So I've written all this stuff down. So let me get the camera in position and let's just talk about these numbers for just a minute. And what do they mean? Well, if anything at all. So I'll catch you here in just a second. All right, guys, I've written down my findings and here's what I think. Um, I think, uh, for a 75, 76 year old lathe, uh, this one was made in 1943. So I guess it, uh, puts it up around 75 years old. I don't think I could ask for any numbers better than these. Are, are these good? Are these bad? Maybe some of you old timers or guys can tell me. Remember, this is an entry level lathe. Um, uh, I've kind of been led to believe that uh, lathes of this era for the hobby market or the low end market, you know, a, a five thousandths of an inch run out would uh, probably be acceptable. So, <coughs> excuse me. So the spindle end play and the axial play, these are great numbers, I think. I mean, the end play at two tenths to three tenths, the axial play of about a tenth. Well, you know, uh, to an extent, you could probably adjust the end play out. Um, although I would think that you'd want some minimal amount of end play there uh, just to reduce the wear and the tear on the bearings, and maybe this is not enough. Or like I said, when I put my headstock spindle together, you know, I... I uh, Tighten the bearing uh, nut down until I felt no play, and then I gave it about a, I think it was about a sixth of a turn or so before I locked the uh, set screw. Uh, but obviously, it doesn't seem to affect it because, I mean, a, a 10 thousandths uh, axial play um, seems pretty good to me. Now, the uh, the run out on the, on the face, uh, and so this is a uh, 5 tenths uh, is what I'm reading, you know, over a distance of, what, uh, 2 inches, you know, so... Obviously, that would be amplified. That's a, probably a quarter tenth over an inch, and then you multiply that out. Say you had a six-inch plate, then you know you'd have about a thousandth or so of runout. Um, but then again, I think uh, taking a cut across that plate or with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, tool would eliminate that. And unless you're driving something on the faceplate that requires, that's probably unnecessary. Okay, uh, the Spindle run out, and this is about four tenths is about what I was seeing. And uh, again, I think that you know this is where the uh, the uh, the recess on the uh, chuck plate or the or the uh, drive plate or whatever you know uh, sits up on that. And you know you'd have to have some clearance there anyway, um, or it wouldn't screw on. It would be a press fit, right? And I don't think four tenths matters now. Let's look at these runout numbers. These these numbers actually seem pretty good to me. Although, you know, look, it's not a hard inch lathe, right? This is just an old uh, beat up atlas. Um, new to me, obviously, but still 75 years old. So when I get inside the uh, Morse Taper 3 socket of the spindle, I'm, I'm reading about a thousandths runout. When I put my Morse Taper 3 to my Morse Taper, taper 2 sleeve in there to uh, to put the center in, I'm seeing about the same runout. And then when I put my Morse taper uh, center in there, I'm seeing, you know, I'm going to, I want to say a thousandths and a tenth or a thousandths and two tenths, you know, it kind of bumps around there uh, a little bit. So look, I think those are good numbers. Now we need to take these with a grain of salt, right? Because uh, first of all, I'm a hobbyist, right? And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm new to using these measuring devices. Uh, you know, I did make sure to, uh, uh, preload uh, the indicator and set it to zero here before I started each little video segment um, and I had uh, you know I had indication both up and and down when it was set so I know that the indicator wasn't bottomed out and I also tried to keep the indicator pointer about 10 degrees or so um, from its uh, relaxed position you know um, if, if you're following me from the part you know in relationship to to the part so this is the part I tried to make sure that the indicator needle was within let's say you know 10 degrees of that either way you know as I, as I set the indicator up so as not to introduce too much air now that being said um, 
Look, this is not a stare at last word indicator. This is a this is an inexpensive uh, shars indicator. Uh, so, are the do the mean uh, do the readings mean anything? Uh, given that I use the cheap indicator, well, I don't know, you know. But I think uh, let's not make uh, mountains out of molehills. If I wanted to turn between centers, uh, perhaps, and if it was uh, had to be a very precise part, I think I would take a piece of mild steel, stick it in my chuck, and turn a 60 degree center on it right and then use that center because i know that would be concentric with the uh, uh axis of the length uh, of the lathe now i do have some morse taper to call it uh, that my wife bought me that i want to try to use in the sleeve does it impact that well yes it does but um you know is a thousandths out of round going to matter in something that i make <laughs> no uh, you know, and considering all the rockets that I make, oh, wait a minute, I don't make rockets, so I guess that doesn't count. But I have made a catapult, guys, a uh, trebuchet, uh, but that's a different story. I don't think it's going to matter. So long and the short of the story is, I think, given the age uh, of this lathe, I think these numbers are a good indication that the lathe was probably well-maintained. Um, given that, uh, yeah, maybe it just set a long time, because there's, I mean, there's wear, but, you know, it is what it is, right? So anyway, um, now I have an area to start from. I guess uh, knowing where I start, I know I, I can figure out where I ended up or maybe partially how I got there. So if you have any feedback, okay, um, about these numbers or about the way that uh, I measured these numbers, please let me know. Remember, I'm a beginner and I'm trying to learn and I'm really leaning on your guys' experience. But now my impression is, after talking particularly to like Art Eckstein and, and Jeremy and, and a couple other folks. Hey, look, these numbers are fine, man. You know, uh, don't get caught up in the minutia. And uh, being a computer geek, I tend to do that. So anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch. I appreciate it. If you found this uh, exercise interesting, um, or maybe it uh, makes you want to see what your lathe is measuring and, and how tight or out of you know, out of uh, round or whatever things are, um, maybe maybe this will help give you an idea of where to set up and 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 at least some measurements to base from. Um, so share this video if uh, you think somebody would be helpful, and uh, subscribe if this if the channel and this the if the the channel if my channel is putting out videos that uh, are helpful or you think uh, uh, other people would like, share them, subscribe to it, um, ring the little bell, you'll get notifications. I try to put out one a week. Um, sometimes uh, I can do more. Sometimes I can do less. Depends on my workload. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, stay safe. Remember to wear protective equipment as you're running your life. And other than that, have a blessed day.